ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a performance excerpt of his piece, Rock My Soul, Mr. Frederick Johnson. journey from foster home to foster home to foster home. 18 months old, they tell me I was when I was first deemed a ward of the state in the state of New Jersey. You know, I don't remember a whole lot about that. The beginning, I mean, what I do remember that started with me and has stayed with me all my life is the sound of my voice. Wasn't privy to a whole lot of tapping and holding. Wasn't privy to a lot of sweet talk love talk but in the stillness of the night i could hear the frequency of my own voice my mom didn't know who my mama was scary thing not knowing who your mom is something that sticks with you all of your life <laughs> and i could feel deep inside this feeling in my being it helped me to stay alive and then I discovered motion rocking back and forth and I been rocking ever since. Early on in my life I just create that sound I could feel it on the inside it was like a caress it felt so good and the more I moved the better it felt you know, it was just like a part of my whole being just to be able to rock and feel my breath turn to sound. Maybe it didn't sound so good outside, but it felt so good on the inside. It was my way of knowing how to feel right, how to feel, I think what they uh, call a sense of peace. <laughs> Story goes that it was really kind of difficult for me to get adopted, you know? I mean, I was this chronic little rocker and sound maker, but that's kind of how I knew the world. It's how I knew to feel all right. And I don't remember a, a, a lot of the places that I went to, but I remember this one, one night, you know, where I was rocking and I was sitting near a wall, had gone to this family's home. I think they really wanted me to be a part of their family, but, um, 
I had this thing where I rocked and I made noise. And then I remember this one particular night, I was near a wall and I rocked and I hit my head against the wall. And all of a sudden, this amazing sensation went down my back. And I was like, oh, that feels so good. And so as I rocked, I would just lightly hit my head against the wall. And it just seemed to add to that whole sensation. And then I'd just add some, some sound to it. And I heard some footsteps coming down the steps and I heard two people say, I heard him say to her, look, that's enough, that's enough. I know you want a child, but that's enough. Something's wrong with this boy. Something's wrong with this boy. It's not normal for a child to do that. And the more I, I, I could feel sort of the energy, like I had done something wrong, like the more I rocked and I'd hit my head against the wall, boom. Mm -hmm. Stop, he said, stop, stop boy. And he looked her in the eye and he said, something's wrong with this child. Something is wrong with this child. And then I was gone. Back on the road again to another home. Back on the road again to another home. You know, when I first was introduced to language, for me, it was comfortable for me to sing what I was thinking. But think of, it, think of it, it's kind of a natural thing. I mean, for me, I think because I was so attuned to and so connected to sound, it was just a natural thing for me to sing a phrase. But I mean, the first phrase that I ever heard that I can remember, and I'm sure you can remember too, is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So it was natural for me, but it felt right. So if someone would say, how you doing, little Freddie? I'd be like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I feel so good. And some people would laugh and some people would say, something's wrong with that boy. Something is wrong with that boy. But it was my way also of kind of living into understanding how people reacted when I did this continuous tone singing thing. One particular thing, the last home that I was in, the, the woman who took care of her, 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 her name was Nana. And there were six other children in this particular home. And of course, I was the smallest. I wasn't necessarily the youngest, but I was like the smallest. And I remember one day she said, listen, y'all, I want y'all to understand this. Stay away from that corner over there. She said, come here, Freddie. So I came over near and she said, hey, Freddie, you like to sing? Sing, light bulb. And I said, light bulb. She said, sing, light bulb. And I said, light bulb. And she said, light bulb. And I said, light bulb. Don't touch it. Light bulb, y'all hear that? Don't touch that light bulb. It'll burn you. And when they come around here to check on you all, then I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I don't need no trouble from any of you children. You understand? Light bulb, don't touch it. felt the power of that and all of a sudden the dynamic of sound took on a whole nother dimension for me when I felt funny when I felt bad when I felt scared when I wondered who's my mama and I just lean in my soul long as I can remember I've been rocking and singing my song journeying through life from the inside out Seeking to find my way, especially on the darkest days. I just keep on going and let the music rock my soul. Let the music.
music rock my soul. In 1956, when I was five years old, Robert and Pearl Johnson came from Trenton, New Jersey to Marstown, New Jersey. And I remember that morning, Miss Nana said, now, Freddie, don't you get them clothes dirty? Don't be laying out in the sand like you like to do in the backyard. We got some people coming here today. They want to meet you. The Johnsons, they want to meet you. Pearl and Robert Johnson came. And I had another little buddy there in the home with me. His name was Otis, and he hung kind of close to me. So when Mr. and Mrs. Johnson came in, Otis was standing right next to me. And Mr. Johnson, Robert Johnson, he kind of took a liking to him because Otis ran over and kind of tapped him on the knee and he laughed and said, what's your name, boy? But Pearl, he kind of liked me and we sat down and talked while Mr. Robert and Otis went outside in the backyard. Turns out that Pearl and Robert decided that they wanted to take a chance on little Frederick. So Miss Pearl said to me, you know, Frederick, I think we'd like for you to come home and live with us. Would you like to do that? Would you like to come home and be with us? Be in our family? And I looked Pearl Johnson in the eyes and I said, Pearl, are you my mama? 